if I was given the chance to come back to this life again, I'm not too sure I want to come back as a black man. <laughs> we disappointed ourselves too many times. He said, are you an Ewe? Who asked this question? The white guy. How did he know an Ewe? He didn't ask me whether I was Ghanaian, Nigerian, Cameroonian. Democracy is one major thing that has crippled all African countries down. Really? Of course. There are certain things that the diasporans also bring which does not fit into Africa. Oh, really? Yes. What are some of them? Well, we are going through post-trauma colonial syndrome. Mm. Africans in the diaspora, descendants of slavery, they are also going through post-trauma slavery syndrome. Mm. But we still need each other to understand who we are and who our enemies are. You're watching some mm. Indians speaking tree on your television station and that is something that you are proud about. That is color colonization. Mm. Our people do not have the sociological imagination beyond their world to understand what the Western world is about. Like, yeah. So the window of looking at things is always from economic point of view. Then you go to the Western countries and you see that they use the basic things to transform their entire world. And we have everything that we cannot transform Why? nothing. Well, you use here and then you use here. We've lost the psychomotor skills. Of using our brains. Yes. Critical thinking. We don't have critical thinking. We need a big overhauling. If it's not better here, you will never go to Kotoka International Airport and see foreigners coming through. There's thousands and hundreds of Chinese people who are walking through the airport now coming in. Some people will ask me, why are you going to Africa for? Africa is very dangerous. Really? It's the whole thing they get from the media. Africa is on fire. There's war. There's this. They get the same news over there like that. The person that gave us the medicine want to keep us like that because when they diagnose us very well we will override the world mm, so they are afraid of that yes we then need to keep us like this so this place will be raw material based world a guy came from nowhere overtook three cars smashed my jeep that was a serious accident with that the guy lost his two legs we think that the more book knowledge you have, the, the, more, smarter you the are. more smarter you are. Almost everybody that walk past will ask my mom, is there any white man living in this house? Every invention, everybody thinks that it's white people that do it. There's no way when you keep doing something, you're not going to be a master of it. Hello guys and welcome back again to another amazing, amazing episode. And this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we have dialogue with diasporan uh, who decided to relocate from the diaspora and currently living here on the continent and uh, today we do have here someone very special but before I introduce the person where we are currently filming is called Gendu Place. Gendu Place is a co-working space located in East Legon, very close to American House. Uh, your diaspora and you want somewhere to work, you know, comfortable environment. They have nice paintings around here. Gendu Place is the place for you. Make sure you check them out. And also, you guys have been asking if we do have Cash App, Venmo and stuff like that. You guys want to support us. I know you've been complaining about our microphones, that our microphone is not good. We keep become, you know, making the show better and better, which is all investment. So we do have Cash App now, Venmo now. If you want to support, make this production better and also guarantee bring you more amazing guests all the time, make sure you donate. Any amount is allowed. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, we do have here someone very special. He goes by the name Zozo and he decided to leave New Zealand behind. Uh, to embark on a new journey, coming back home to Ghana to start a new life, new business, and uh, yeah, without further ado, welcome on the show. Thank you, my brother. I've heard so much about you. I was at your business yesterday. Yeah. I've seen what you've done for yourself. Mm -hmm. But I want us to, you know, go to the beginning of your story. But yeah. before we do that, people are watching you for the first time. Can you briefly introduce yourself to the people watching? My original name is Yao Boate. Mm. And my artist's name is Zozo. Z-O-H, Z-O-H. The Z-O-H is abbreviated, meaning zebra on highway, zebra on highway. Oh, really? I'm very black and white. Ah. That is the meaning of Zozo. I like that. Yeah. Why zebra on highway? Um, I'm zebra, I'm black and white. Yeah. I'm on a highway, you can't catch me. Mm. Um, my, my, my brain works like a bullet train. <laughs> goes very fast. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes you'll be talking to me and mm -hmm. I'll be very quiet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I'm not capturing what you're saying mm -hmm. or anything. Mm -hmm. It is because I am digesting it about 200 million times. <laughs> I'm fast forwarding the tape and everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I so, like that. Um, I was involved uh, in music in mm. New Zealand for mm. about 14 years. Wow. And that's why I use the name Zozo. Mm. It's part of my musical stage name. That is when I go on stage, you I can't like catch that. me. I like that. I had a, an intense energy on stage. What yeah. kind of music were you performing? I was doing Afrobeat. Afrobeat. And uh, not the Afrobeat in the modern 
times now, but the Afrobeat of the Fela Kuti. Fela, okay, okay. Yeah, Red Nation, yes. Wow, let's go to the beginning. How did, because you say you are Boatin, right? Mm-hmm. You are Ghanaian. Mm-hmm. How did New Zealand come about for you? How did it happen? Were you, you were born in Ghana? Let's go back to the beginning of your story. Yes, I was born in Ghana. I was born in a tiny village. Very, very, very tiny. It is still very tiny as we speak. You can use 15 minutes to walk around the whole town. Really? Yes. That's where I was born, mm-hmm. in a front place, mm-hmm. uh, a town called Bebusu. Mm. But then I came to live in Accra when I was around 10 years old. Mm. I was living with my dad over here. So I went to school, you know, went to uh, Pope John Secondary School. Mm-hmm. So all Pujoba guys, Charlie, greetings, man. And then <clears throat> I went to training college. Mm-hmm. So I trained as a teacher. Okay. So I'm a mathematics and social studies teacher. Oh, wow. I taught at the junior secondary school mm-hmm. for about three and a half years. In a front place? No. Where? In um, Ofwansi, IUB constituency. Okay. Yeah, that is okay. in the Br- Brim South. Okay. Yeah, that is where I taught, in Eastern region. Yeah. So, whilst I was teaching, mm-hmm. I was always, you know, um, trying to get some adventure. Mm-hmm. Mm. to go out there and also seek another knowledge. I see. And that is how I ended up in New Zealand. But I went to New Zealand as a student. Okay. So I went to university over there. That is how mm-hmm. I entered New Zealand. I see. So I went to a, a university called Unitech. Okay. Institute of Technology. Mm-hmm. Currently enrolled. What was that? What year was that? Um, 2003. Okay. Yeah. Wow. 2003. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So after completing the university... Uh, you, you decided to do music, or that no. as a music? <clears throat> no, it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, my first semester at school, because I was playing music over here alongside when I was teaching. Yeah. Um, I was very interested in traditional music. Okay. So I invested my time to learn music around the villages in Suhum, mm-hmm. because I think the latter part of my mm-hmm. time, I came to teach at Suhum mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So I spent about a year mm-hmm. learning traditional music over there. So when I went to New Zealand, part of my working package in my head was that I was going to look for a school to teach music Mm -hmm. whilst I go to school. Mm -hmm. So I took a piece of drum with me when I was traveling. And then when I got to New Zealand and got to my school, the following day, I asked of the dance department. So I went to the dance department with my drum hanging. Hanging. (laughs) And whilst I was walking, then this white guy came out. And he was looking at me like, who is this guy over here? Yeah. What I'm saying is in 2003, 2004, we were only two Africans mm. at, the, at the whole university. Really? How, what was the uh, population of the university? Oh, at least maybe you could get to about 800 to 1,000. Really? Yes. And just two Africans? It, yes, only two Africans. Wow. And within that township where I was too, probably maybe four Africans. Mm-hmm. So when he saw me, he was looking at me like, who is this guy? And who is this guy with a drum? But he asked me a very interesting question. Mm. He said, are you an Ewe? Mm. Really? Yes. Mm. And I was like, wow. Who asked this question? The white guy. Okay. Yes. He said, are you an Ewe? How did he know an Ewe? Thank you. And I was like, he didn't ask me mm-hmm whether I was Ghanaian, Nigerian, Cameroonian, but he's, he, you know, he's, Go to the he's tribe. zoned in mm-hmm. and went straight into the tribe. Mm. So I was surprised. So I asked him why. And he said, because of the drum you are holding, mm. you must be an Ewe. Mm. Because this is Ewe people, their drum. How did he know that? And I said, how did you know? He said, oh, I was in Ghana at that time. Mm-hmm. I was in Ghana 10 years ago. Wow. which could be 1993, 1994. Mm-hmm. And he stayed in a small little village close to Denu. They call it Kopei. Mm-hmm. And he in studied... In the Vota region. In the Vota region. And he studied the Ewa traditional music for nine good months. Wow. That Man. early? Yes. And I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. So then he asked again, mm-hmm. are you an Ewa? Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. My mom is Ewa, my dad is an Ashanti. Mm-hmm. And he said, okay, so what are you doing here? I said, I came to, the, I came to uni. I'm reading international communication. Mm-hmm. And he said, so why are you here? Mm-hmm. I said, well, I'm looking for a job. And he said, okay, I'll give you the job. Mm-hmm. I'm the head of the dance department. Mm-hmm. And I play drums too for them. But I have a problem with my wrist. 
So I gave you the job. Oh, wow. So he gave me the job. And I was like, okay. Mm. So you became a musician to so play the drums? So I became a drama at the okay. dance school. Mm. Contemporary dance. Mm. <clears throat> it's, not, it's not too intense like that because it's, a, it's more spatial dance. But, you know, then I was now getting a different vibe. Mm. It's not Agbaja, it's not Kinka, no, it's a different vibe. Mm. So I was doing that. And then come one Friday, he said, oh, I want to take you to my house. Mm. I want you to see what I have in my house. I have a band as well. So he took me to his house. Almost any drum from West Africa, mm, he, he has, has it. it. Wow. He's the been collecting. From the Atumpan, the Dondo, the whatever you can think of. That is West African collection, mm -hmm. dominant from Ghana, Ivory Coast, Burkina, Mali, Jembe, wow. all that. He has it. It's just like a, mu a, mu like a museum. Mm. And so then he said, I want you to teach me the Ewa type of drumming again, but I have a group. Our group is nine piece. So would you like to join the group? I said, mm. yeah. So I joined and I started teaching them. Mm. But then they had a, what they call Afro Kiwi Jazz Band. Afro Kiwi? Afro Kiwi Jazz Band. Mm. So he said he wanted me to be the percussionist in the band. Mm. I said, okay. So I joined the band as a percussionist. But his style of composition was all based on Fela Kuti. Mm. He's somebody who was a big fan of Fela. And he's learned almost all Fela songs. They play the instrumental jazz of Fela because they can't really not sing the like pigeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So that is how I got myself involved with music. Wow. And so you did then, that for 14 years. Yes. And so then I started studying. Mm -hmm. I started studying. I started studying, you know, learning things from him and all other bandmates, you know. We have guitar, we have drum, we have, you know, um, the horn lines, mm -hmm. trumpet, saxophone, mm -hmm. all that. So my ears were becoming, you know, bigger, bigger and bigger, you know, because student of learning. Yeah. And, and that is how my journey was. Mm. But I came back to Ghana 2007. Mm -hmm. And it was because that I hadn't learned enough of the traditional music mm. to be able to impact the way I wanted to impact. Mm. That is, I was now teaching as a, a visiting lecturer okay. at the uni. Yeah. And going to primary schools and you know, going to teach. And I felt like I needed more. Mm. So I came back to Ghana. To learn again. To learn. And be able so, to go back and teach. Yes, yeah, so I was in Koforidia for one year. Okay. Anybody watching this, mm -hmm. um, if, if you're in Koforidia in those days, I, brought, I was using a right-hand drive white car. <laughs> and, I, and I had the drums on yeah. top of the car, driving everywhere. Mm -hmm. And people would say, who is this Rasta man who came back from overseas and is always, yeah. always carrying drums around? It's yeah. me. Yeah. yeah, so I did that for one year. Yeah. I studied from different, different tribes, and I repackaged myself, mm. and I went back. Wow, nice. Now, let's, let's, let's talk about you living in the New Zealand, right? Yeah. Your day-to-day -day life, the people reacting to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've seen a whole white man who knows your culture more than you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At that point, right, yeah. where you felt like you had to go back and learn more again. Mm. Talk me through that process. I'll say that New Zealand does not typically have the slavery, mm -hmm. African mm -hmm. history. Mm. They, mm. they are a very young country. And the original people that occupy New Zealand, they are called the Maoris. 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 Mm -hmm. M-A-O-R-I. Mm -hmm. So those are the aboriginal people. Mm -hmm. And they are a bit more darker skin, even though they are not dark like us. And then English people went to colonize them. Mm -hmm. So there is still a base of colonization and darker people's story over there. But it is not intense like slavery story of Africans right. in America or yeah. Africans in Europe and all that. Mm. So um, typically, I will not say a New Zealander is a racist person, mm. typically. Okay. That is not what they I, are. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. They are also like, they've seen this dark Africans mm -hmm. and they are inquisitive mm. who are they right so by do you get all those things because you have a long dreadlock yeah. right how do people react to that when they see you and stuff at the time when I went to New Zealand I was not dread I was afro oh okay I was okay. afro mm. but even that the, my color mm -hmm. my hair everything was very uh, 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 how do you call it um, 
intrusion. You yeah. know, it was like something new. Yeah. So some people will see you. Mm-hmm. They want to touch your hair. Mm-hmm. They want to mm-hmm. touch your skin. But you didn't feel like it's racist or anything like that. No, I didn't feel like it was. I didn't mm-hmm. feel like it was any racism. I flip it back when I was a, a, a little boy mm-hmm. in a village. And seeing white people in the village, yeah. where we also run and yeah. gather around them, yeah. uh, you know, I took that template and I said, right. it's the same it's thing. The same. You know, in Africa, where we haven't seen white people before, when you see them, there is that inquisitive. Yeah. You get, become very inquisitive to try to know who they are. And so I get the same thing. I remember I went into a school mm-hmm. to go and teach mm-hmm. seven hours away from Auckland. Yeah. And I got to the school and all the little kids ran Round wow. to me, Bob Marley, Bob Marley, <laughs> Bob Marley, you know? And I was like, man, yeah. I was like, you know, Bob Marley's dead a long time ago, you guys don't know. But yeah. that was how it is. Yes, here and there you meet some kind of racist people. Right. But typically, people are not racist to you because you are black. Mm. It is just that one, one in here, one in here. But Half of the time, yeah. if you just follow the normal basic rule, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. you are cool to go. Mm. And um, yes, there are some places that they will tell you that you are not registered, so you cannot enter mm. as a member, mm-hmm. like some nightclub or something like that. Mm. But yeah. I don't let those things bother me. Really? I just move on to the next, you know? Yeah. 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 So you, how long do you live in New Zealand for? I was there for 14 years. 14 years? Yeah. Wow. So... Why, why did you feel the need? I mean, you were teaching music in the yeah. universities and teaching yeah. um, a lot of people. Why all of a sudden starting to look back to Africa, trying to, or look forward to Africa, trying to establish yourself here? Because you do have a whole restaurant established, yeah. which we will get into it. Yeah. How, how did that transition come about for you? Uh, one, I didn't think that I went to New Zealand to go and stay forever. Mm. That was one thing. Mm-hmm. I think for a lot of us traveling, maybe Africans, some people have this idea that when they go to overseas, they will not come back anymore. Yeah. So, yes, I was an economic migrant, mm-hmm. but I didn't feel the need or that desperate enough mm-hmm. that if I go, I will not come back. Mm. That was not, that was not my agenda. Mm-hmm. I am a knowledge seeker mm. that I was wanting to expand my knowledge base mm. so that I can come mm-hmm. and empower my world. Mm. So, living in New Zealand, in my mind, I think most of the time I was in transit. Mm. You get what I mean? Yeah. I was in transit. Yeah. I was learning a new life. Mm-hmm. I was young. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, I started feeling lonely. Mm. Yes. Even how? though, even though, um, uh, how do you call it? Uh, new Zealand is four million people. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. But we don't have enough of our own kind over there. Yeah. So no matter who you are, you start to miss that. Yeah. You start to lose it. Mm. You start asking yourself mm-hmm. place and time mm. where you are. Mm. What do you want? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So when you put all that together, then mm-hmm. you want to come home. I see. So I started feeling like, you know what? I think I've come to learn enough. You know? I think my journey is coming to an end. Mm. And I would like to go back home. Mm. Go and look for something else come here, maybe empower the music scene, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. becoming an agent of change mm. in a positive way. Mm-hmm. So um, I decided to come back. Mm. But it wasn't easy. <clears throat> it wasn't? No. What made it difficult? Well, I had lived there for, for quite... 14 years? Yes. Mm-hmm. And I got used to a lot of things. Right. The so conveniences. T- thank you. The mm-hmm. system. Infrastructure. Everything yeah. work, you know. Mm-hmm. So... I dipped my toes slowly into Ghana. Mm. I didn't just jump in. How did you do that? I came to Ghana, like, okay, 2007 I came. Yeah. Then 2009, I came to Ghana. Uh, 2009, when I came to Ghana, it was for a production. Mm. I came back 2013. I came back 2015. Mm-hmm. And then 2016, I decided to stay. Hmm. 2016? Yes. Wow. Yeah, so 2016 is when I actually made up my mind that mm-hmm. I think it would be good for me to just to do, stay. Do, do the move now. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I didn't, I didn't tell myself in my head that I was coming to stay in Ghana permanent either. Yeah. It was like, let me come to Ghana, see what I can do over mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And then somewhere along the line, mm-hmm. I'll go and visit mm-hmm. and then I'll come back. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. that kind of slow, slow movement. Mm-hmm. That is how I, I, I made Wait, it. Were you there with your family in New Zealand? Your wife, your children or anything like that? Uh, no. Okay. No. 
I wasn't there with a the family like that. Mm -hmm. I was most of the time just alone by yourself. Alone by myself. Was it easier because you were alone moving down here or you thought it would have been different if you were with your family or something like that? Oh, it would have been different mm -hmm. if I had a big family over there and I wanted to move down. Right. It wouldn't have been easy mm -hmm. because, you know, you would have to convince a lot of people mm -hmm. in the family brackets to mm -hmm. try to bring them to Africa. Mm -hmm. And so um, it is easy when you are by yourself mm -hmm. and you want to move. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that was... But how, how did your, your... I mean, you were working with people in news and how did they react to you saying that, listen, I'm not going to be teaching you drums. Oh, you man, you know what? A lot of people didn't like it. Really? A lot of people were disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, some people would ask me, yeah. what are you going to Africa for? Mm, really? You know, Africa is very dangerous. Really? Yes. Yeah, Who so, are these people? Yeah, these are, these are normal, normal New Zealanders, normal white people. Mm. You know? Why are you going there for? Mm. It's very dangerous over there. And it's very dangerous over there. It's the same sort of the whole thing they get from the media yeah. that Africa is on fire. Yeah. Africa <laughs> is burning. Yeah. There's war. There's this. They get the same news over there like that. It's just that some of us, you know, we walk through it without not having to think about it too much. Mm -hmm. So people were really, really disappointed. They thought that I was coming to Africa coming into the danger again, mm -hmm. coming into war, mm -hmm. you know, you die, you'll be killed, all that, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, not many people were that happy mm -hmm. with me like that. Mm -hmm. But um, it was a decision that mm -hmm. was needed mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. um, as I said, I was feeling lonely, yeah. you know, yeah. as that but goes how on. did your family down here feel about that? Because normally we... We often see our uncles going abroad and they are like almost like the savior to our family, right? Yeah. Where every month we look up to them to send money over, right? And yeah. if you're telling your whole family that, listen, I'm now moving back to Ghana to live with you, how did they react to it? Well, to them? you know, I never told any family member of mine that I was moving to Ghana. Really? What I did was, I came like I'm having holiday. Mm. So when you asked me, I said, yeah, NGB Hameko. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So I, didn't, I, never, I never really had any conversation with anybody like, oh, yeah, I have moved down mm -hmm. and this, this and that. Mm. So Why was that? I was because I wasn't, I wasn't prepared mm. to be answering too many questions and to, to give them all the, the story and the history mm -hmm. of New Zealand. You know, our people mm -hmm. don't understand or do not have the sociological imagination beyond their world mm. to understand what the Western world is about. It's like, yeah. So the window of looking at things is always from economic point of view. Right. That, oh, you know, you're making money, you make money, you do that. But it's not easy. Mm. You know, everything we've been saying here now, it's not that easy working in, in you know, in, 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 the, foreign in, in the foreign land. Mm -hmm. You know, I would, drive, I would drive seven hours from Auckland to Wellington, maybe to just to go and do a workshop for drumming. Seven hours. Seven hours. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then from there, maybe you go to another town. You know, like you are pacing everywhere. You are driving. You're constantly engaged doing something. It's, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Mm -hmm. So when you compare your world and this world, you start to ask questions. Where can you fit yourself? Right. But remember that before I left here, I was employed as a teacher under Ghana Education Service. Right. So, yes, I wasn't having much money, mm -hmm. but I wasn't too desperate like that too, that the world was coming to an end. Mm. Do, do you get what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. So my game plan is if I come back to Ghana, mm -hmm. I should be able to do something mm -hmm. beyond what I was doing. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. that living New Zealand is not going to shatter my world. Right. That right. I had enough belief mm -hmm. and confidence within myself yeah. that all the resources in Africa yeah. plus what I have yeah. gained here, yeah. there's no way I'm going like, to go in and fail. Mm, I like that. And I saw what you've done with a pallet, you know, redesigning and repurposing pallets that we normally just throw away yeah. into building like furnitures, which we even used to build your own, um, <laughs> is it, uh, what do you call it? It's a, it's a food truck, yeah. Yeah, yeah food truck. Let's yes. talk about how that came about for yeah. a minute. Okay, so... This whole inspiration came from my sister. Mm, your sister? My sister. Okay. So um, my sister went to a chef school. That was one of the, the time I came to Ghana. And I asked her what she, what she would like to do. And she said she want to go to a chef school. Mm. So she finally went to the chef school mm -hmm. and then finished. I came back and then she said, oh, I, I've, I've completed the school. Mm -hmm. So please look for a job for me. And I said, oh, I don't know anybody. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe you should cook yourself. 
mm. and then people will come and buy. So we were living in um, Lashibi area, the Klago, okay. mm-hmm. and I said, in this, this community where we live, there's no food, so start cooking. If you cook and people come and buy, I'll do something for you. Mm. Mm-hmm. So she cooked first week, Ben food was gone. Second week, Ben food was gone. But then coming in Ghana and driving around and looking at almost every pallet being thrown away. Mm. And New Zealand is a very it's a woody country. And like their structures are all made yes. in wood and stuff like that. And I have done odd jobs as a student, working in the construction side, blah, 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 blah. So I have a feel of basic measurement. I've learned how to do plasterboard and all that. So I have a little bit of a technical skill mm. where that is transferable. I see. And I see wood being lined and not used for anything. So my idea was I was going to make a nice table mm-hmm. for my sister to put the food stuff on mm. and sell. And sell it, I see. So I went out there, got some pallet, got a carpenter guy in addition to myself for us to create that. Mm. In fact, the carpenter guy told me that I wasn't correct. That, um, <laughs> you said you're crazy. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Why? Because in Ghana, nobody uses pallet to do anything. Wow. You know, they use mm-hmm. it for firewood. Mm-hmm. So he left me there. And, the guy, and the guy selling the pallet also told me that the guy is right. So I need to go to the timber market and buy proper wood. Mm. So I bought the wood like that from the guy. The carpenter guy was in my car. He jumped out to go home. Mm. I got to the house. Brought all the wood down. I could tell from my mom's face, my sister's face, like, who is this? What is this? What is this? You know, he came back from overseas and he was, what was he doing? So I went back to the carpenter dude and I told him, bro, I still want you to help me mm. for us to construct this. Mm. So what I'll do is I'll pay you. Mm-hmm. I know you are not interested in this, but yeah. I'll pay you. Mm-hmm. He said, okay, if you pay me, fine. Yeah. So, you know, I brought the design out and then we did that. And then I said, oh, should we simplify it and policy? He said, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want any some people job. Give it to some young boys to do that one. Really? Okay. That was it. So I had the whole thing being polished. And then my sister started selling. Mm-hmm. But almost everybody that walked past. Mm, they talked about it. Would ask my mom. Mm-hmm. Oh, is there any white man living in this house? Mm-hmm. Really? Because, you know, our people think that. The whole thing was made by a white man. Because every invention, everybody thinks that it's white people that do it. Mm. So they will ask my mom like that, and my mom will say, no, 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 no. Why Bro, do you think like that? Bro, Nibia and Tifia, mm-hmm. it's my son. Yeah. It's my son who, you know. Then people will say, eh, the thing is very beautiful. The thing is very beautiful. The thing is very beautiful. Then I started creating from there. Then I said, okay, my sister is selling drinks. Let me make a cart for my sister mm. so that when we finish, we can carry that cart into the, into, into, into the living room so that it doesn't stay outside, mm. something mobile. Mm-hmm. And I did that one. And I saw it. It made it into the New York Times. And that's what made it to the New York Times. Wow. So, mm-hmm. since then, mm-hmm. my brother, it looks like my left brain or my right brain was open. Mm. The whole technical specs mm. was back in there. Mm. And I started researching, learning, and building all sorts. Mm. So I've built so many, so many, so many things in, in Ghana. Mm. You know, mm. from a big giant wine barrel to wooden car. When you go to number one, yeah. number one uh, Oxford, yeah. Dankwa, we go in there, yeah. you see a wooden car around the swimming pool. That's my job. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. And so um, I never stopped creating again. Mm. I went hard mm. and that is what i dropped in africa mm-hmm. where almost everybody has been copying and working with palette now mm-hmm. i was taken to burkina mm-hmm. because of that mm-hmm. i met the president i was i went to uganda because of that so um i mean i mean waste mm. i mean waste waste wood mm. i mean waste recycling mm. anything that is dead I like to, to give it another life. Mm. It's like, you know, giving it another resurrection. I like that. That is where my, my field has been um, since being back in Ghana. Mm. But, but before then, yeah. when I came initially, yeah. before the wood, what I brought was YouTube. Mm. YouTube? Yes, I was one of the first 
few YouTubers yeah. in Ghana. Really? Yes. Wow. Yes, I started. How, how did you? How did that start for you? Um, I started around 2000 and I think 2016. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so if you go back onto YouTube mm -hmm. and you're looking for Zo TV, mm -hmm. Z O H TV. Mm -hmm. I'm the person. Wow. So you were, you were posting your life and your transition. Yeah, yeah, no. I was doing the diaspora and stuff. Oh, really? I had gone to one Africa in Elmina, mm -hmm. um, you know, interview mm -hmm. Shibas, um, you know, the whole Cape Coast Elmina place mm -hmm. where almost all the diasporans wow. know me. Yes. Really? Yes. So but why did you thought that was necessary for you to do? Because I had already studied the YouTube thing in New Zealand before coming. Mm. And I knew that it was going to be the future of the next storytelling. I like that. Wow. Yes. So I knew that. So I brought a whole production gear okay. with me. Wow. And asked me what happened. Yeah, what happened? Ghana broke me down. How? One, the guy who was my cameraman one yeah. day decided to steal everything of mine. <laughs> Anybody watching this who knows me and goes back onto YouTube channel and yes. see my stuff over there and didn't know why I stopped the channel was wow. because my things were taken away. What? Yes. So if you Google, I'm actually one of the first YouTubers. If the YouTube channel is still up. It's still up. I'm still going to post it. Let's let's restart this channel for you. Yes. Do you, do you think you want to do it? I want to I want to do it. So yeah. yesterday when you came to my place, yeah. I don't know whether you went into the other room. Yeah. You will see that I've written the Zo TV podcast. Mm. So I want to restart it again. Yeah. Uh -huh. I want to restart it again. It was. Let me know when you restart it. I will yeah. be your first guest on the show. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes. So YouTube mm. brought you. You know, to, to, you started with YouTube. Yes. And then you, you did the, the furniture thing with a palette. Yeah, so when I started the YouTube stuff, then I was doing the furniture side, yeah. side uh, alongside. And I was wanting to just grow mm -hmm. my page. Yeah. And the furniture stuff was just something like a hobby. Hobby, you know? okay. It's like I found a new niche yeah. that I have the talent for. I like You it. know, mm -hmm. uh, I can build anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, if you if you bring something to me to build, you excite me. Oh, Charlie, yeah. I got some new stuff to build again, yeah. man. Yeah. Let me do it, you know. It wasn't something that I have to stress myself. Mm -hmm. It comes to me naturally. Naturally. Uh -huh. But yeah. the YouTube stuff was like, um, I wanted to come and change the narrative of Africa uh, just by my experience of traveling around the world, mm. what I have seen, I wanted to just change the story like and, wow. and, then, and then push Africa on the bigger, on the bigger like map. That. <laughs> that, that's why we, we're here. So I'm glad you are one of the pioneers to yeah, that. Yeah, that's man. amazing. Like, yeah. that's, what, that's what the channel is about, yeah. trying to change that narrative. Mm. Now, one thing that stands out to me last night when I came to your place is the structure you've put in place where you sell food in that. Yeah. Talk to me about it. How the restaurant thing came about, which is Palette Kitchen, right? Yes. Mm. So because my sister was the chef, mm -hmm. when I did the mobile cart, then I decided that this business will be bigger than just a smaller cart. Mm. And finding space to rent is expensive. Finding the right location to put a kitchen or a restaurant is expensive. So I decided that I want to create a mobile food track mm. so that my sister and I can take it anywhere. anywhere. I see. When did this start? When did you decide it? What year? I built I built that track in I think 2017. 2017. Yes. Wow. It's been oh, about eight years now. Eight years, yeah. Yes. Mm. That's why I built that track. Wow. It is the first mobile wooden food truck on the entire continent. Really? You can't find it anywhere. Wow. If you find that piece somewhere, mm -hmm. then it is my story. Mm. Yes. So it is fabricated in Ghana. Mm -hmm. The whole design. Mm -hmm. We did the whole metal chases, mm -hmm. like a car, mm -hmm. and then we put the wooden thing on top. Wow. And everything was also waste wood. Because mm -hmm. my idea now is to tell people that it is no waste. Mm -hmm. It can be used. Exactly. So um, I've built about four food trucks. One for myself and three for other, other people. people. There's wow. one in Kumasi around Santasi. Okay. I build that oh, one. So, so people can actually get you to yes. create it for them? Yes. Okay. Yes. So well, How um, much does it cost to build something like that if people are interested in that? Now, now as we speak, mm -hmm. with what I have over there is 60,000 CDs. 60,000 CDs. Yes. That's like $6,000. $5,000, $6,000. Five thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, but there's wow. everything inside. We do all the cabinets. Mm -hmm. You know, do all the cabinets inside, and then 
Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's customized to suit what you want. I see. Uh, I you see. Know, we do all the lighting. The one you saw out there yeah. yesterday is solar powered. Solar. Yes. Oh wow. Because my idea was, mm -hmm. if I was going to be mobile, yeah. How do how then do, do I have electric? Le yes. So I made it solar powered. Wow. And then so we used to take it to the Sakumono Beach. Sakumono. Okay. Yes. But then um, we went there three times, mm -hmm. and a guy came from nowhere, overtook three cars, smashed my jeep. I smashed the whole thing. I was in a big accident. Wow. January, uh, I think January 2017. Mm. I was in a serious accident with that. Wow. Um, just, you know, um, I was lucky that mm -hmm. nothing really happened to me, but mm. the guy lost his two legs. And so the truck you saw mm -hmm. has been in an accident. Wow. But you see the way it still stands. Stand strong. Yes. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. structural engineering thought processes that went into the manufacturing. I like that. Yeah. This is really interesting. This this there's a story that inspired me because we can do it too. Yeah, we can do it. We can do it. You see, um that is why earlier on mm -hmm. when I said something to you that yeah. if I was given the chance to come back to this life again. Yeah. I'm not too sure I want to come back as a black man. <laughs> you know, that's what yeah. I said. Because I feel like black people, we've disappointed ourselves Let's talk more too many times. Let's talk about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. The continent has everything. Mm -hmm. Anything you can think about, mm -hmm. the continent has it. Mm -hmm. But we are the only people begging everywhere around the world. We are, the, we, we, you know, every day, look at how many black people want to move from Africa to go to the other world yeah. and, and don't care about Africa. Mm -hmm. And then the very people who are in Africa as our leaders don't also care about Africa. Mm -hmm. So then when you, when, you, when you go to Asia mm -hmm. and you go to the Western countries and you see that they use the basic things to transform their entire world and we have everything and we cannot transform Why? nothing. Well, you know, it is... Oh, one part of it is our history, mm -hmm. which we need to decolonize. Mm. So we need a decolonization process mm -hmm. that mental slavery thing. This is not an easy journey either, mm. but we need one good leader who understands that our world need to be the new world to be talked about, mm. where people will want to move and come here, where we deny you visa mm. that you cannot come here. Mm. That is what we have to be seeking for. But they have free visa to come to Ghana, and we don't have free visa to go to their country. That's what I'm saying, mm. because when they came here, yeah, there was no passport. Mm. They made the passport. Mm. And mm. then they create immigration. Mm -hmm. They created a lot of footprints that they have a control over. And therefore, they are the ones who will benefit from that. How do we begin to take ourselves out of that, you know, in your own opinion? I tell you, man, um, Ghana is going to another e e e electioneering year but we still haven't found that sort of person mm -hmm. that will take us out of this game. Mm. No. <laughs> you see, to take out of this game, mm -hmm. you will be look at somebody who is a revolutionary, mm -hmm. or a pan -African. is a pan-African. Mm -hmm. You know, they will label you with all that. But how many people are willing to toe that line and not being labeled? Mm. Do you get what mm -hmm. I mean? That yeah. is why we haven't found any African if we, if, if we are able mm -hmm. to deal with, to, to tell ourselves that we don't want to deal with modern democracy, mm -hmm. then, we, then, we can, then we can move ahead. Really? Democracy is one major thing that has crippled all African countries down. Really? Of course. I'm telling wow. you. Maybe no. A lot, a lot of, of people, the division. A lot of people will not agree with me, mm -hmm. but democracy is too no, expensive. Think, mm. It's too expensive to practice to start off. Elaborate on that. How many? How much money mm -hmm. do Africans spend just mm -hmm. to elect a, par a parliamentarian? Mm -hmm. To elect a president, how much money do we spend? How much? We spend a lot of money. I don't have the figures off my head, mm -hmm. but everybody knows. Mm. Everybody knows. Mm. You see how many land cruisers that each candidate will have to go around with. You see how the state mm. shows so much wealth mm. to just to... Impress the people to vote for them. To only elect one person. Mm -hmm. How much money do you, do you spend to elect a king? Mm. No. How much money mm -hmm. do you spend to elect a king or a queen? Mm. You don't. Mm. You see? So they took us off template. Mm. They told us that our old template was bad. And the new template they gave us it is also very bad. Mm -hmm. How, why do you want people to rule for four years mm -hmm. 
go another four years. Go. Why? Yeah. What, 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 what is that game what plan? What I've studied is when they come in four years and build something, then yes. the next four years, yeah. the other uh, uh, governments tear it down. Yes. And then the next four years, they build it again and they, they keep tearing it down. Yes. And that cycle repeats. Yes. And it, well, that cycle is part of the democracy. Mm, democracy. Yes. That cycle is part of the democracy. <laughs> because they make you feel that come four years, mm -hmm. you are not supposed to be in power and the next person will come. So there's no national agenda. Mm. If you want to build this country and you don't have a 100-year plan, and if you have a 100-year plan, is that plan mm -hmm. going to be a plan that will be shared by NQQ, NFF, NCC, NDC? Mm -hmm. No, because mm -hmm. this party comes in with the agenda. Mm -hmm. Four years come or eight years come, they get out of power. Mm -hmm. The next person come, he does not continue. What so is there's the a discontinuity. What is the solution? The solution is monocracy. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. The solution is monocracy. Mm -hmm. The monarchy system. No, monarch, monocracy. Monocracy. Elaborate yeah. on that. I think that we have to merge democracy alongside with monarchy. Mm. Yes. I see. Yes. We can't play. We can't play the game only on the Western template. Mm. It's not working. We have to create our own template. We have to create our own template mm. by merging a strong sense of leadership coming from the kingship system mm -hmm. with the democracy we have now. I like that. Yes, but if we are only towing the line mm -hmm. of modern democracy, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. Let's talk about the mindset of our people and then the damage of colonialism with a mindset where we believe that everything made by the white man is the best and everything invented by our people is the worst. In terms of even if we want to invent our own government, uh, government system, we don't even believe that is the best. And then let's, let's talk on that, on that. Yeah, well, the thing is, the entire education curriculum will have to change mm. for us to be able to inject the new vessel mm -hmm. into the head of the African mm -hmm. that what we have is good. Mm. You see, the entire education curriculum does not really mm -hmm. speak about Africa or talk about Africa. Mm -hmm. It talks about me when I was in secondary school, I was learning about Birmingham, blah, 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 blah. You, you know? are a teacher, so you know yes. the curriculum. Yes, you know, learning a lot of things about, you know, other, part, other, other, other countries, which was okay. You know, I did, I did geography, which was okay. But they did not give us enough foundation about the Yourself. history of Burkina Faso, mm. or they didn't give us enough history about Mali. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. I always ask people, mm -hmm. You learn more about your uh, Europe than you learn about your Thank you. country. Yes, mm -hmm. I always ask people. They said that, um, how do you call it, Portuguese arrived at the coast of West Africa in yeah. 1472. Right. Okay? Now, that is where, mm -hmm. when you take our normal history, yeah. that's where it starts from. Mm. Right? Yeah. That is normal. Yeah. So an average person in Ghana yeah. thinks that when European came in 1472, that's where that is starts. where history started in Africa, in Ghana. Mm. But you ask yourself, if there is 1472, then there must be 1372. Exactly. Then there must be 1272. What happened there? What happened then? What happened up to first century? We don't know. Where is, where is the book? Mm. Where is our history? Where is it? Where is it? You got what I mean? Yeah. So now, me and you, we are, mm -hmm. we, we are operating from 1472 when the world, when you, when you take things back to Egypt, you know, Kemet, and then you are looking at pharaohs and pyramids being built 7,000, 8,000 8, years, years ago. ago. Mm. And we are here mm -hmm. talking about in 1472, Godgesbeck. when Godgesbeck <laughs> came here. Come on, man. You know, something wrong with us. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Something wrong with us. And we have professors and whatever, emeritus and all that. We're having to rewind the clock. Why are they not talking about it? It is because that... The person that gave us the medicine mm -hmm. want to keep us like that. Because mm -hmm. when they diagnose us very well, we will override the world. Mm. So they are afraid of that. Yes. We then need to keep us like this so this place will be raw material based world. Mm -hmm. So that you know they can control and take things out where we cannot fight it. Mm -hmm. So if you become so educated about all this, then you become a threat. Mm. So our education system, it still keeps us where we are. Why, why are we not studying anything which will give us a technical innovation revolution on the continent? Mm. But we, we still keep producing bureaucrats, but we don't produce technocrats. Mm. Mm. You look at the whole Asiatic block. Mm -hmm. Check on YouTube right now. There is a, a, a Thai man or Malaysian man building with bamboo. Mm -hmm. Look at the views. It's mm -hmm. 1.6 million views. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's building with bamboo. Yeah. It got 1.6 million views. Yeah. So, 
look at that transformation. Yeah. He's been teaching the almost entire place that you can use your hand to build this, to build that, to build that, and create a comfortable space for yourself. And when you do the same thing in Ghana, when you do the same thing in Ghana, nobody, will, nobody will even watch it. Wow. So how do we get technically equipped mentally? Mm -hmm. You know, there's something we call psychomotor skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you use here and then you use here. Mm -hmm. We've lost the psychomotor skills. Of using our brains. Yes. Critical thinking. We don't have more. critical thinking. Mm -hmm. So there is, we need a big overhauling, mm -hmm. you know, in the entire education system for us to be confident about ourselves to push the agenda. How do you think a diaspora will play a bigger role in equipping, you know, our people here on the continent to be able to think like that and create things? Well, the thing is, mm -hmm. you know, um, this is, this is a, how do you call it, um, the, the, the diasporan, mm -hmm. they have a lot of things that they can offer. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there are certain things that the diasporans also bring which does not fit into Africa. Oh, really? Yes. What are some of them? Well, you know, there's certain mindset mm -hmm. and certain reasoning. You see, West is about individualism. Mm -hmm. Africa is about mm -hmm. collectivism. Mm -hmm. So when you come from the West and you have an individualistic approach to everything in Africa, then it doesn't work. Mm. So sense of collectivism is what we need here. Mm. So even though our people have been out there and understand certain things, I don't think that they are able to copycat it very well mm. into our system. Mm -hmm. I think whether undercopy or overcopy. Over mm. So you ask yourself, how come we have so many ministers, mm -hmm. almost everybody with a degree from University of blah, 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 Sheffield, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. You know, all the big names. Harvard. Harvard. Mm -hmm. But look at our economy. Look at the state. Look at Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. How many degrees does Kigami have? To be able to turn Rwanda into what it is. To be able to, tell, to turn Rwanda to what it is now. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Yes. We, we think that... Mm -hmm. The more book knowledge you have, the, the, more, smarter you the are. more smarter you are. Mm -hmm. But I think that idea needs to be looked at mm -hmm. again on a different mm -hmm. scale. You know how even during election, if you don't have some crazy degree, you can't be a member of parliament, you can't you know, become an MP, a minister and stuff like that. Yes. Even if you are smart. Yeah. So my grandfather mm -hmm. had, has a story building in our hometown. Mm -hmm. My great-grandfather. Yeah. Yes. And he has about 26 windows around the story building. Mm. Anywhere you stand, you can see like anything. Mm. He never went to any school, but he was the architect, mason type of person that mm. built that. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many uncles of mine have been able to do that? Mm. Who went to so many schools and stuff like that? So, yes, school is good. We've been lied to, will you say? Yes, we've been lied to. We've been taking, we've been taking what will make us smarter to actually used to build our world mm -hmm. as we've been told that that is not what we it's need. It's a cake. Yeah, it's a cake. So, um, um, you know, when we were going through, mm -hmm. we, we are going through post-trauma mm -hmm. colonial syndrome. Mm. Africa is going through really? post-trauma colonial syndrome. Mm. That is how I call it. Mm -hmm. But most of Africans in the diaspora, mm -hmm. especially descendants of slavery, they are also going through post-trauma slavery syndrome. Mm. Mm. Do you get what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. So we haven't got our footings right mm. on both ends. Wow. But we still need each other mm -hmm. to understand mm -hmm. who we are mm -hmm. and who our enemies are. Mm. Mm. Do you think Ghanaians know about, knows themselves, Ghanaians in general, or even Africans? Africans, most Africans don't know themselves because we don't know the history. Because our history starts from slavery. Yes, yeah, our history uh, starts. Our history starts from colonialism, mm. so we don't know our history. Wow. Yes. This is deep, guys. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Give one advice to people watching that will begin to set them on a path of knowing who they are. Uh, first, I will say that anything you are doing here, mm -hmm. you have to keep doing it, and you have to master it. Mm. Mm. There's no way when you keep doing something, you're not going to be a master of it. Mm. One of the things that we have lacked is adding value to our things. Mm -hmm. We have not been able to add value. So even if you're amazing, mm -hmm. add value mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. to your skill mm-hmm. and make sure that you become the best mason. Mm-hmm. If you're a carpenter, mm-hmm. add value. Mm-hmm. Make sure you become the best carpenter. Mm-hmm. Anything you are doing, because that is where we are now. Mm-hmm. This is who we are. This is what we have. We can only just add value mm. so that the other world can appreciate it and we can appreciate it. Mm. So anything you are doing in Africa here, mm-hmm. it is important mm-hmm. that you keep doing it. Mm-hmm. Don't leave that. Don't leave all that and tell yourself that the world is better somewhere. No, the world is better here. Mm. The world is better here. Really? Yes, the world is better here. Mm. You've been if, in it's, if, mm-hmm. if it's not better here... Mm-hmm. Then you will never go to Kotoka International Airport and see foreigners coming through. Yeah. But as we speak now, I'm telling you, there's thousands and hundreds of Chinese people who are walking through the airport now coming in. It's true. I was on a flight to Ghana, and there were more foreigners on the flight coming to Ghana than there were with black people coming. Thank you. So how come that the same world that mm-hmm. they talk about that it is dangerous, it's on mm-hmm. fire, you mm-hmm. die, diseases? Mm-hmm. How come? How come people still keep coming here? Yeah. If it is that bad, Mm -hmm. do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. If it is that bad, then how come people come in here? It is television itself in in Ghana Mm -hmm. needs to change its content. Mm -hmm. The narrative cannot be only done by me and you. Mm -hmm. But the bigger media space Mm -hmm. needs to change their narrative. Mm -hmm. Me and you, we are in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And people are watching Kunkum Baja or Baja Kunkum or something like that. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're watching watching some, some, uh, how do you call it, uh, 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 some mm-hmm. Indians speaking tree mm-hmm. on your television station, and and that is something that you are proud about. How you know that is color colonization? Mm. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're giving it another inferiority complex again. Indians are on your TV stations speaking tree. Where did our local content? Where did it go? Mm. Mm-hmm. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. The, changing the minds is not only from one angle. It's a holistic approach mm. from all walks of life mm. that we all need to look at. So you playing your part now, mm-hmm. but the bigger media need to play their part mm-hmm. so that we can brand Ghana and say, this is who we are, this is mm. what we want. Mm. Do you get what I mean? I like that. Yes. I like that. You, you've been here in, in Ghana for eight years, transitioned from New Zealand yeah. to Ghana. It definitely comes with experience. What would you say is a strong three advices you'd give to diasporans watching us right now who want to, you know, follow your footsteps? One, I would say that if you don't have good finances, Mm -hmm. don't make the move. Mm. Yes. Wow. If you don't have good finances, don't make the move. So they should prepare enough money. You have to prepare enough and prepare, have enough money Mm -hmm. to be able to stay in the loop. Mm. Two, you have to be mentally strong. You have mm. to be mentally tough mm. to make the move. Because the culture shock. I am speaking from a total diasporan mm-hmm. born in the other part of the world. Right. But have African parents or whatever mm-hmm. it is mm-hmm. moving in. Mm-hmm. Me, I was here before. So you know what it so is. So I like. know what it is. But if Africa is a fresher zone for you, you have to be mentally tough mm. and to be ready for a new journey. Mm. You can't be like, oh, uh, yeah, it will be okay. No, <laughs> no. Mm. Africa, the terrain of Africa is a very rough terrain mm-hmm. because systems are not in place like that. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. have to be the system yourself mm. and you have to lay down certain path that you want and make sure that it will work. Mm-hmm. Even though, yes, one or two systems will work, but it doesn't work like the way it works over there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you have to be mentally strong ready, enough. mentally strong I see. to be able to make the move. And the last one will be? The last one will be overall looking at it like Africa is the next giant mm-hmm. with almost mm-hmm. endless opportunities. Mm. that when you put yourself in, your life can be better mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So as much as it's a very hard place to be, when you find your niche, you fly. All right. So we are almost at the end of the conversation. Yes, my man. Um, if, if you do have like a, a message, you know, a final message to people watching you mm-hmm. all over the world, what would that message be? Africa will be great again. Africa will be great again. Yes. I like that. Africa will be great again. But someone will say, have Africa ever been great? Yes. When? It's because they don't know their history. Mm. And that is the homework for everybody to go and look at. I like that. Africa was 
once great mm -hmm. and Africa will be great again. Mm. The Mansa Muses will come again. Mm. Yeah. I like that. Amen to that. Thank you so much for talking to me. How do people find you? Even, you know, your business, your locations, your... your, your, your... I'm located as my business point mm -hmm. of contact, 10 Dr. Esther Oklu Street mm -hmm. um, in Osu, which is the Palette Kitchen. Mm -hmm. So Palette Kitchen is my eatery and, um, um, you know, it's a pub. Mm -hmm. It's a restaurant. Mm -hmm. That's where you find me. I like it. And, and I it's, a live, it's a live music venue too when you are looking for something authentic. Yeah. Something different. And I saw what you did yesterday. You, you organized an underground uh, music festival. Yes. For all the underground rappers in Ghana yeah. to be able to come together to perform um, and then be able to showcase their talent so that people who have their fans yeah. to be able to support them. I think that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. That's Thank amazing. You. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I think people are also hanging out. I saw a lot of diaspora hanging out casually at your joint. Is there a place where diaspora can also meet to say eat and stuff like that? Yes, my place is an Afrocentric venue. Mm. The story I am telling now is the story of the place. Mm. So I build the place. So I put my cultural mm -hmm. African values mm -hmm. into the place. I saw, you, I saw on the wall you have Malcolm X, you have Marcus Gavi. Which yes. Yes, I have a table for Marcus Gavi. I have a table for Kwame Nkrumah. I have a table for Fela because I think that for Africans, we don't celebrate our heroes enough. Mm. So when we start celebrating our heroes, then we can actually learn some footsteps from them. Mm. So that is what the place is about. So it is a place where you can generate and develop conversations mm. that are not just small talks but something on a deeper level. I like that. Yes. I like that. Something on a deeper level. I would go to the place and get, and get a tour so you guys can see what exactly he's talking about. Yeah. And uh, guys, if it's your first time here, YouTube is telling me that 80% of you guys watching this video, you love it, but you forget to subscribe. So this is the opportunity for you guys to, you know, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and then, you know, let's support this whole movement. Uh, make sure, because the more subscribers we have, the more YouTube kind of promotes our videos uh, to the worldwide and also they like and share, you know. And I also remind you guys, a lot of you guys have been complaining about our microphone and our production quality. Of course, you can see that it's becoming better and better and better, but it all costs a lot of money to do that. And you guys wanted to support. We didn't have all those cash up and stuff, but now we do, thank God. Uh, so we have cash up. It's going to be on the screen somewhere. There's a QR code somewhere. Also Venmo. So guys, feel free to donate, uh, to support, invest into this production so you can always keep you know, seeing videos like that uh, on, on your screen. So yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. It's been a wonderful one. Uh, do you have anything to say? Big shout out to all my fan base mm -hmm. and people that came out yesterday for yeah. the Underground Music Festival. Mm -hmm. There's more coming. Mm -hmm. There's better things coming. I like that. So, you know, keep watching. The channel mm -hmm. when the good story hits, yeah, by all means, it will be, it will be here, yeah. I like that, yeah. Thank you. You Thank always you, too. you always know that this channel is all about good stories and then deep conversation. We, we just don't like the, the small talks, we just like the deep stuff, and that uh, you know where to find the deep stuff if you're looking for it. Web Nation Africa. So, without further ado, let's say bye bye to them, all right? Peace out.